I'm going to, ah, well done. I'd forgotten, Nolene. And I'm going to ask with, um, start with Mantra because you came off your um, mute for a nanosecond there. So I'm going to ask you to come off mute and just say hi. Um, let us know what your energy is like, what the last couple of weeks have been like. And if there's anything specific that you're struggling with or trying to make a decision on, um, that you can make the focus of the process that we go through today. So Mancha, um, I hope I've said your name correctly. Um, do you want to just come off mute and say hi? Good evening. Um, I actually wanted to request before I start going into detail, can I please log off and join the meeting because I'm struggling with network? Sure, absolutely. Okay. Now there's a way to get out of it. That is a very clever way. <laughs> I've, I've rejoined the meeting at about four times. So I think I should just log off and then join the meeting again. Okay. Because I'm struggling Perfect. with network here. No, we want you here in full. So log off and come back. And in the meantime, let's jump over to Palesa. So um, maybe if you can just say hi and, and just do a quick check in with us. All right. Uh, thank you, Brioni. Um, so, evening, everyone. Uh, unfortunately, I, I missed the first session, uh, so I can't dwell so much. And I haven't even had the chance to check the recording because I know uh, Nolin sent us that. Um, I didn't uh, check that out. So the past couple of weeks for me, oh, so I was on leave. My leave actually started on the day of the session. So that 20th, I was on the road. So I was traveling uh, for most of my leave. It was just two weeks though. So it was nice. But when I came back, yeah, I paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the last couple of weeks have been so hectic school-wise, work-wise, um, so personally, so yeah, I've been, but I'm surviving, not complaining. I am still managing to balance everything out, but yeah, it's been just hectic. I just feel like I just need some rest, but mm. there's no slot for rest. Even throughout the festive season, I've got a lot of deadlines for my studies in Jan. Mm. So yeah, I'm, 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 I'm that girl who is just... Yeah, taking it as it comes at the moment, but otherwise I'm good. I'm uh, okay. not complaining. Good. Oh, well, thanks for checking in. And yeah, that's the struggle with having a nice holiday is that things catch up and somehow you come back and feel more exhausted after a holiday than before. So Pelesa, you get to nominate somebody else to check in. Rory Sam. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, hey, hey, everyone. Um, unfortunately, I had a, a mishap a week ago in which I broke my shoulder. Well, dislocated my right shoulder. However, um, I've been okay. No complaints from my side since the last meeting. Good. That's um, for now, I'm, I'm at my best because I'm attending the Christmas carols to the, for the little ones. Oh, so, how lovely. <laughs> My attention will be divided, but I'm all in. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. Do you get to nominate somebody else to check in? Oh, great. Um, Ntako, Victor. Uh, hello, guys. How are you? Hi, good and you? I'm okay. I'm okay. Thanks a lot. I just... Uh, I uh, was just a bit delayed. I'm from uh, the field, so I just uh, had to find a spot where I can find a network. But uh, I also missed the last meeting that we had, but I will just catch up uh, via YouTube. So, uh, but everything is great on my side. Thanks. Fantastic. Thanks, Victor. Uh, um, will you nominate somebody else? And then I think we can jump in and get going. Um... Uh, Chiamo, 
Great. Good evening, everybody. Um, from the last session, actually, uh, quite a lot has happened for me. Um, I had to relocate from Cape Town to Pretoria because I got an internship this side. So just the whole transition from moving from that side to the side and just, yeah. So that's that's been what I've been. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. It's a big move. Yeah, it's a big move. I'm, I'm originally like from this type, from this side. So it's like a little weird coming back. I've got used to <laughs> um, Cape Town life, all the mountains. There's oh, no yeah. there's no wind this side. I think that's just yeah. But <laughs> I know. Um, but yeah, it's been it's been quite interesting. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, I'm gonna nominate gift. Lovely. Gift, if you'd like to just do a check, quick check in. Oh, hi, everyone. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. Uh, since our last session, uh, I think nothing much happened. I've been applying, knocking on doors. Uh, so, yeah, but so far, nothing positive, but uh, I'm keeping, I, I keep pushing. Okay. I think something will come up uh, very soon. Yeah. Yeah. So. No, keep, keep pushing and applying yourself and hopefully something will come up. Yeah, thank you. All right. So in our last session, we talked about the concept of the inner critic. And the inner critic, for those of you who didn't manage to make it to the session, is really that part of yourself that tries to protect you by keeping you small, okay? It's guarding your comfort zone. And the moment you start getting to the edge of your comfort zone and you start doing things that might push you out of your comfort zone, your inner critic pipes up and says, oh, no, we're not ready for this, or you haven't studied enough, or you're not good enough, or you don't know enough, or you're not experienced enough. And, and it can be quite a harsh voice. And most of us have an inner critic. And especially when we start doing things that are new for us, um, our inner critic can show up quite loudly. And we talked a little bit in the last session about how to dial down or quieten down your inner critic. And... And so if you weren't part of the session the last time, I really encourage you to go and have a look at the YouTube video um, because there's a lot in that about um, when you understand what your inner critic is trying to achieve and that it's just trying to protect you, but that its way of protecting you is no longer relevant as an adult, it becomes a voice that you can separate from yourself and start to see as something that is a part of yourself, but doesn't have to be a part of yourself that overwhelms you. And, and so I really wanna encourage you to have a look at that because when our inner critic overwhelms us, it stops us from being able to step up. It stops us from being able to take risks and it stops us from being able to show up as our full selves. And, and when you are moving into your careers, looking for new opportunities in a transition, often you're going to be out of your comfort zone and that inner critic is going to be waving that flag. And when you can notice the inner critic and notice what it's saying and start to be curious about whether that feels true for you, then you have more control over the actions that you take. But Today, what I want to focus on is a different voice inside us. And that different voice is the inner mentor. So where the inner critic is this younger part of yourself that wants to keep you safe and small, your inner critic is a future, wiser, more experienced part of yourself. Where the inner critic can be quite harsh and um, quite punitive, your inner critic is a much calmer, much more gentle part of yourself. And so I want to help you access your inner mentor today um, as, as one of the mentors that you have 
right here available for you at any time that you want him or her. And, and I think this becomes an important part of yourself because so often we look for wisdom outside ourselves. We look for validation outside ourselves and, and we look for advice from other people. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but there's certainly a need to be able to look for advice from yourself and, and really to um, access this wiser future version of yourself that can help you think through things. So without going into further detail, what I want to ask is if you are in a place where you are able to close your eyes, I wanna invite you to join me on a bit of a visualization exercise. And, and so I just wanna get a show of hands or thumbs up or reactions or something just to confirm that you are in a place where you're able to sit in your chair, um, be able to close your eyes. Um, so I don't want you to be doing this if you're driving a car. Um, and, and really be able to join me in a visualization that's gonna start with a breathing exercise and then move into a future visualization. So just give me some reactions. I saw Nolene put her thumbs up. Um, anybody else? Just let me know that, that you're okay with this. All right. Okay, I've got a few other thumbs up. So I'm gonna go ahead now. All right, so I want to invite you in your chairs to sit comfortably, put your feet on the floor, put your hands in your lap and to close your eyes. And you're welcome to lean back in your chair but I don't want you to fall asleep. So get comfortable, but not so comfortable that you fall asleep. And once you've got your eyes closed, I want you to start by taking a deep breath in through your nose and a nice deep exhalation through your mouth. And we're gonna repeat that a couple times. So breath in through your nose, and a nice long exhalation out through your mouth. Keep on breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth. And hopefully as you continue to breathe, you start to feel yourself relax a little bit. And some of you have come into this room talking about being quite exhausted and tired. And so I just want you to breathe in deeply and breathe out that tiredness. Now continue to breathe in your own pace. Keep your eyes closed. And we're gonna do a little bit of a scan of our bodies just to get in touch with how we're feeling. So I want you to start by bringing your awareness to your feet. And as you breathe in, feel the breath go deep into your body and imagine it swirling around your toes. And as you breathe out, breathe out any tension that you might have in your feet. And take another deep breath in through your nose. And imagine that breath bringing awareness to your ankles and to your calves. And just feel the space around your ankles and calves and breathe out any tension that you might be feeling there. And I want you to take another deep breath in. And bring that breath to your knees and to your thighs. Feel your hamstrings on the chair. And as you breathe out, breathe out any tension that you might be feeling. And then bring your awareness to your hips and to your abdomen. Breathe into that area. 
And breathe out anything that might be feeling stuck there. And breathe into your chest. Like deep breath in through your nose. Let the breath swirl around your chest. Let it bring warmth and energy to your chest. And breathe out any of the tension that you might be feeling. And bring your awareness to your neck, to your shoulders, into your arms. And breathe out anything that might be stuck. And if you need to roll your shoulders a little bit to release any tension, do that. And then let your breath come into your head. Feel it swirl around your scalp around your face, around your cheekbones, around your ears. And let out another slow breath, letting all that tension release through your mouth. I want you to keep your eyes closed and continue to breathe in your own rhythm, in through your nose, out through your mouth. And I invite you to imagine with me that you're standing on the earth and you see a bright beam of sunshine ahead of you. And you step onto this beam of sunshine. And as you step on, you feel its warmth and you feel its lightness and you feel its energy. And you start to notice that this beam of sunshine is taking you up above the earth. And what was in fine detail starts to become a little bit less detailed. And eventually you're so high up in the atmosphere that you can see the whole of the earth in its blue and greenness with the clouds swirling around it. And you've got this beautiful big perspective of this earth. And while you're up in the atmosphere on your beam of sunlight, you realize that this beam has taken you 20 years 25 years into the future and that it's slowly bringing you back down to a future earth and as you get closer to the earth you start to see more details again what was green and blue becomes more texture um, it starts to have a temperature you start to see the details around you in this future version of your life and the sunbeam brings you down to earth and you step off it and you start to notice what's around you. And just for a moment, imagine for yourself what the landscape looks like. Imagine in your mind's eye what you see, what you can hear, what's around you, what sort of features are there, what feels familiar and what feels new for you. And as you start to take in your surroundings, you see a pathway ahead of you. And this pathway is of your imagination. It's whatever you imagine it to be. And I want you to walk along that pathway, slowly taking in the detail of what's on the path, what it feels like under your feet, what's next to the path, what's alongside you on the path. What might be above you as you're walking on the path? What sort of temperature it feels like? What you hear and the essence or the energy that you feel as you're walking along this path. And you continue to walk along the path and at some point you start to see a house ahead of you. Imagine what this house in the future might look like. This is the house of your inner mentor, a version of yourself, wiser, older, more experienced, but it's a part of you in the future. And as you come towards the house, the door opens and there stands your inner mentor, welcoming you in, inviting you to come into the house and to have a drink and have something to eat. 
And so you enter into the house and your inner mentor greets you, passes you something to eat and drink. Take a moment to notice what that, what the food, what the drink might be. Take a moment to look around this house, to see the details of it. What furniture is there? What's on the walls? What's on the floors? What's the energy like in the room that you're in? What does your inner mentor look like? What might he or she be wearing? What's his or her face look like? How does he or she hold himself, standing up, sitting down, walking around the room? Take in all the details of this future version of yourself and the surrounds of where your future mentor, your inner mentor lives. And just take another deep breath in and out. And then your inner mentor invites you to ask a question. And it's a question that's been weighing on you for a little while. It's a decision that you need to make, or it's something that you need to do, or it's something that you're trying to resolve in your life, in your work, in your studies. It's something that's been taking up some of your energy and you need some answers. Your wiser future version of yourself has those answers. And you ask the question. And just for a moment, I want you to listen to your inner mentor. Listen for the answers, for the wisdom that your inner mentor has to share with you. Listen to the words that your mentor says. Listen to the words that your mentor doesn't say. Listen to the energy that your mentor has. And then your mentor asks if there's another question that you have. And so you ask it. And your mentor thinks for a while and then gives you an answer. And then you ask your mentor, what's been the most important thing about the past 20 years? Something that you've learned, that you've done to get from where I am to where you are 20 years in the future. What is something that I need to know to get from where I am to where you are? And your mentor shares some ideas with you on what the journey has been like to get from where you are to where he or she is. Just take in that wisdom. Take in some of the symbolism of that wisdom. You have an opportunity to ask one more question of your inner mentor. Now ask it now and listen for what your inner mentor has to share.
And then your mentor tells you that it's time for you to be on your way back to the present time. Your mentor has a parting gift for you. That gift could be some words. It could be something symbolic that he or she hands to you. But it's something that's very meaningful and its symbolism means something to you. You thank your mentor and leave the house. And go back along the pathway, taking in the details again of the path. Walking towards your sunbeam that's waiting there to bring you back up into the atmosphere, back from the future, back to where you are right now. And slowly but surely, your sunbeam brings you back to Earth. And I want you to take another few deep breaths. And when you're ready, Wiggle your toes, wiggle your fingers, and open your eyes. So I'm curious, what was that experience like for you? No, Lynn, you fell asleep. Just kidding. <laughs> so I want to ask you to take a few minutes for yourself to write down what that experience was like for you, who you met. Um, write down some of what you remember from the conversation, what you asked, the questions that you asked your inner mentor, and some of the answers that your inner mentor gave you. And if you would like to share some of your experience, you're more than welcome to unmute and share with the group or write some comments in the chat. And I see Palesa saying it was refreshing. So Palesa, maybe you can share with us a little bit more about the experience for you. Uh, so for me, I say refreshing, uh, Brioni, because for that period, it was, so remember when I introduced that, when we started the session I told you how exhausted I was mm. so from from a space where I came in immediately I just firstly with the exercises felt refreshed and now I feel like I can even go to the field and do uh, two to three hours of field work oh, so wow. that's the first it's just refreshing to just sort of you know when it's so hectic and so busy mm important to just take a step back and just calm down mm. uh, yeah. stop calm down get the positive energy or the required energy you need to proceed mm. and for me that is what I just felt in these just through this first exercise that we've done that's wonderful so I want to ask can you share with us a little bit about who you met um, on this journey, what your inner mentor looked like, um, what her energy was like, or his energy, that depends on who you met. I met my 19-year-old self. Mm -hmm. um, the, the more, so the big, the big message, it was more of, the reminder to myself of all 
the promises and the plans I set out for myself then. Because mm -hmm. I've realized sometimes you forget, you know, when you were just at the brink of starting up or, mm -hmm. or you know, getting into this journey of studying and then, you know, getting into the industry. So for me, I met my 19-year-old self. Mm -hmm. They told me to come down and remember your vision board. Lovely. So yeah. it was somebody who was reminding you, not necessarily an older version of you, but it was somebody who was reminding you of what you were about, what you yeah. value, what you are setting out to achieve. Yes. How oh, lovely. So what parts of that inner mentor could you channel when you find yourself getting tired and, and losing focus and, and losing direction? Well, for, for me, what, what I would say, uh, Rion, is what I've already mentioned, that stop, that time, just stop and stop and release that positive energy. Mm. So I would say it's, the stopping is important because, mm. uh, you know, life gets so busy that you just, the meditating and stopping to just calm down. <laughs> so yeah. that's the, yeah. Yeah, I think that's an important message for all of us is we get so caught up in just being busy, busy, busy and not taking a moment just to stop, take a few breaths, find our space and ask ourselves what we're actually trying to achieve and then moving forward in a clearer headspace. So I really like that you've taken from this that the need to just stop once in a while actually brings you a huge amount of energy to continue. Whereas so often we get caught up mm -hmm. in thinking we have to keep going in order to achieve what we want to do when actually sometimes just stopping and, and getting some perspective helps. Thanks, Palesa. Marlene, you wanted to add to that. I did, yes, you're absolutely right. Um, you know, we're so busy rushing after our goals that we sometimes just need to stop and go, are these actually still our goals? Mm. Or are we now just rushing because we've started this avalanche of, of rushing? Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. It's, I think we get very caught up in being automated in the way that we do things and not thinking about what we're doing at all. Um, and sometimes it just requires taking a breath to refocus and, and get that perspective again and realize that maybe we're doing things that we're not actually, that are not helping us at all or that we're not really connected to. So I want to get some more perspectives um, and maybe uh, Tiamo, um, maybe you can share with us what the experience was like for you. Um, for me, it was quite a little different because like I'm a very introspective person. So I'm always looking forward, looking backwards, seeing who I want to be like I always like check myself in terms of like those you know those who I am in five years and whatnot mm. Especially when every when when a big thing happens I always just like check myself so it was more like just having a conversation that I had with myself like a few weeks ago and seeing where I want because I still I have a picture in my head or mm. some sort of an idea of who I want to be where I'd want to be so it was just me checking in if it's still that same person mm. and was it yeah it was it was it was okay. it was I, it was a little different in terms of what matters like mm -hmm. certain values were different but at the essence of it, it was still the same person so can you share with us some of the kind of the symbols that came up in your vision um, and what some of those symbols might represent for you? 
Um, I think the first thing, you remember when you were saying like, um, when we touching down back to earth, the first thing for me was just open green spaces. You know, I don't know. I like being outdoors. And I think mm -hmm. that's something that I, as I'm getting into like the industry and everything, I realize a lot of people are always in concrete world. And that's something that I always want to hold dear on always being outside. So the first mm. thing for me was just greenery, trees, clean air, just like people riding their bikes and whatnot. So that mm. was that thing for me. And and what is what is the symbolism of that? What is the meaning of that for you in your life right now? Um freedom I'd say hmm. yeah freedom and 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 introspect like like I like to hack a lot and I like being outdoors and when I get whenever I get on top of a summit it just reminds me of all my problems are so minute because the world is so big you know it just balances me out you know it's like yeah my problems are big but the world is bigger you hmm. know yeah so I, that that is what is the what it means for me it's like freedom and understanding that whatever you're going through right now matters not like there's just so much beauty and so much things that are bigger happening in the universe and in the world itself that whatever you lovely doing, perspective yeah yeah lovely perspective so I want to ask you how do you bring that wisdom to play when you're struggling with a situation or you have a dilemma or you're trying to make a decision. Uh, the first few hours, days is always tricky because I mean, I am human at the end of the day. So I'd be like <laughs> blowing like everybody else. But after, of, after I check myself, yeah, I, I like calling it like just checking myself and just being like, this happened, you know, you can't change it. So why, why, why worry about it? You know, like, uh, and I think it's also because I read a lot. So I, I always remember one book I read. It always talked about the, fi the fives, you know, if it's not going to bother you in five minutes, if not going to bother you in five years, why worried about it? So I, that's how I take my process in struggles, you know. Is it, is it troublesome now? Can I fix it in the next five minutes? Mm. If I can't fix it in the next five minutes, there's no need for me to worry about it. If I can fix it in five years, then I'll worry about it in that five years. But worrying about something that I can't change right now, but can change in five years matters not. I can worry about fixing something right now. So wow. that's, that's how I deal with struggles and things that bother me right now. That's such a lovely perspective. It Thank sounds you. to me like you're channeling your inner mentor quite regularly. I think so. I, I've been blessed to, to be a... Uh, an introspective person and to always like look forward I remember <laughs> just remind me I mean in, when I was in high school I was having worries about when I was 20 and people my mom was like just relax you're just in high school there's no need <laughs> so I've always been I've always been a future thinker of okay yeah. where am I going how am I gonna go is this what I want where is is it gonna happen the way it's gonna happen mm. and then then when I get there, I'm like, okay, fine, I've achieved this. Okay, 20 has hit. Okay, what's next? 25 has hit. Okay, what's next? So, yeah, because I don't know. I feel like I always, I have a thing of, you know, I live with the saying of always try to be the better version of yourself. Mm. So I think because I live by that, I'm always looking to be better as the years go. Yeah, I like that. And your inner mentor is the more experienced, wiser, calmer version of yourself. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So we've heard from two of the ladies. I'd love to hear from one of the guys. Um, and I'm just wondering, Rory Sung or Gift or Victor, if you want to jump in and share your experience of this. And I see Rory Sung has promptly disappeared. <laughs> ah, he's back. Uh, Victor, what was this like for you? Oh, thanks. Thanks. Um, yeah, that was um, an experience that I think is it's a lesson to me, if I have to put it that way, because mm -hmm. uh, just to put it in a nutshell, um, 
I'm busy doing my master's. Um, this is my second year doing my master's right now. And uh, on the other end, I'm busy also doing the field works and so forth. So like I'm just doing these things simultaneously. And I'm, I'm a person who is over ambitious. And in such, this session or this exercise has helped me to um, kind of be warned that I, um, being over ambitious can, can bring some negative trends in such a way that uh, it can result to some mediocre performances. And uh, in such, I will have to you know, set some goals some of them I won't be able to possibly reach them because I'll be so much over ambitious not to look around and see just to focus on what is uh, what is uh, at hand. So I, I, I got to conclude that I have to be um, I have to not to be little ambitious or not to be over ambitious, but just to set goals as well that I will be able to reach because because you know, in a way that I'm doing my masters and I'm also just busy with work, uh, setting goals that I won't be able to reach. It will, it might also, you know, in a way, um, hinders me to achieve also these uh, um, uh, things that I'm doing right now currently. So mm. yeah, I think in a nutshell, this is what I've I've learned that I must be careful of uh, uh, this thing because it can result to a mediocre performance. Yeah, I, I think that's such a great insight that you've had there and what I'm hearing you say is that it's about finding time to do things well and that doesn't necessarily mean making lesser goals sometimes mm -hmm. it means being more realistic about the amount of time that you give yourself exactly exactly because I mean uh, for the past I think for the past two months three months um, I actually set my goals to say, you know what, I'm going to finish my master's within two months, which was a little bit of ambitious because I didn't look around and just to consider what I was currently doing. And at the moment I was busy focusing on the field work. There was a lot of projects that I was doing. So I was, mm. I ended up just having fatigue mm. and in such a way that I was not able to cope also just to concentrate on what I was supposed to do for my master's and also what I was supposed to do for the projects. And, you know, it ended up, I just ended up in the middle and not performing in all other areas. So mm. yeah, this session has helped me to, you know, just calm down and just to, you know, have time to deal with one goal and deal with one uh, issue at a time and just to see the progress as well. That's lovely. So it's, so it, what I'm hearing from that is that perhaps your inner mentor shared with you a way that your future self handles things and, and the mm -hmm. journey that your future self has taken to get from today to 20 years time. Exactly. Okay. So I want to ask you, when you find yourself getting really busy and getting caught up in goals and not having enough time, how can you access your inner mentor's wisdom? Um, just to be, uh, um, you know, it's it's more of uh, um, having to set uh, um, time goals and just to set time frames for 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 everything. And mm -hmm. that was how my inner mentor encouraged me to do when I was doing that exercise that uh, I have to be careful I have to be careful into just doing uh, things because of just doing them but just to do them to complete them and one thing at a time so that's what I was encouraged uh, you know mm. to to see that successful in a mental station of mine mm. uh, you know just to, to yeah just to just to be uh, um just to take a break and just to do things, you know, in a pace that I will be able to handle. So, I, yeah, that's that's what I was encouraged to do if I have to play that way. Yeah, so it's, I mean, there's a very simple question you can ask when you find yourself getting caught up in things and getting anxious and stressed out about all the things that you're trying to do. And that's to just stop for a moment, take a breath like we have, and ask yourself, 
what would my inner mentor do here? How would my inner mentor handle this situation? What sort of decisions would my inner mentor make here? And, and just for a moment, close your eyes and ask your inner mentor for that wisdom. Because that inner mentor is part of you. And it's that part of you that's able to shut down and quieten the inner critic that's saying, oh, you need to do more. You need to kind of add more things here. You need to do bigger things. You need to do more things at the same time. And that's where we get this overwhelm from, is this voice that's saying, do more, 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 more. Do it faster, do it better, do it bigger. And the inner mentor's wisdom comes to calm that down and just say, do it well rather than doing it just for the sake of doing it. And so I really mm -hmm. want to encourage you to, when you find yourself feeling overwhelmed, just stop and ask, what would my inner mentor do here? And it's, I mean, I have a post-it note on my computer that says, what would my inner mentor do here? And often when I find myself kind of getting caught up in being busy, it's very easy to look up and go, ah, oh, there's a visible reminder to just take a breath and think about how a wiser version of myself would handle this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah. I think it might be quite nice to break up into some breakout rooms now um, and, and maybe have a discussion amongst yourselves about a situation that you're struggling with and how your inner mentor would tackle that. So what I want to ask you to do is get into this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, three, six, nine. Okay, so maybe we break up into three groups of three and one person is the person who asks the question, how would your inner mentor handle this? And the other person describes the situation or a challenge that you're facing at the moment. And, and you have a conversation where the person who's having a struggle or a challenge or a decision to make is being prompted by the other person with the question, how would your inner mentor handle this? Okay. And it gives you the opportunity to literally think about how your inner mentor's wisdom would change the way you're dealing with something at the moment. And then the third person is really there just to listen and to witness. And then I want you to change roles. So each of you gets to describe a situation that you're struggling with or you need to make a decision on, each of you gets to ask the question, how would your inner mentor handle this? And each of you just gets to listen and to witness the conversation. How does that sound? Uh, Brani, you and I yeah. won't go into... Um... Oh, yes, you're right. We won't go in. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven, Seven. Okay, so I'll break it up into two groups. Um, there'll be three in one and four in the other. Is that okay? Sounds good to me. Fantastic. All right, so breakout rooms. Uh, hello. Hello, welcome back. We, we were not done, but yeah. Thank <gasps> you. <laughs> Sorry. That, that makes me so happy to hear. I mean, that basically says that you were having a good conversation. Tiamo uh, is, is just going on, but I, I appreciate it. I guess I'll take it on with her later. Oh, fantastic. No, it's, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm sorry we pulled you back. I mean, we can put you back into a breakout room if you want. You can uh, share with okay. us. Let, let, let us not hold everyone back, but she can, she can, she can share it in right now. I, I'll give her that permission right now. Fantastic. Oh, she was advising Share me. with us. Oh, I love it. <laughs> um, so basically what I was saying is that I think Rory Sang is suffering from expectation versus reality. 
because oh. whenever we go into anything there's a certain level of expectation of this is how the company is going to be this is how i expect my um colleagues to act and because i have worked so hard i've accomplished so many things while i was in my um undergrad and at university i come with a certain level of i i, I demand the level of respect because i have worked for it and then you enter into a workspace where people are like oh you're just a, a newly undergrad what do you have to offer but then when they look at the things that you have then it turns into an inferior complex where then you towards them you start being a problem because you were everything they were not when they were that age mm. Yeah. Mm. Oh, there's so many things that you've said in that. And it's, I mean, there's a couple of things I want to pick up on there. The first is we leave university as experts at being students. And we start in the world of work being novices in the world of work. And so it's, it's a really, it's probably one of the hardest transitions because you go from being really competent at what you're doing to suddenly being in a completely new environment where what made you competent as a student doesn't necessarily make you competent in the world of work. Mm -hmm. And it's a complete shift in, in expectations and identity and finding your feet. And, and it's a difficult shift to make. I think the other thing that I want to say is that so often we get criticism and feedback from people and because a lot of us are schooled in doing things well, getting good marks, doing things perfectly, achieving all the time, we seek out um, praise and sometimes we struggle with criticism. And it's really important to recognize that praise and criticism are a reflection of the person who's giving the praise and criticism, not always a reflection of you receiving that praise and criticism and so when you can unhook from the actual words and look at firstly how does this reflect the beliefs and the values and the kind of the mindset of the person who's giving the praise or criticism and secondly what part of it is useful for me to take on okay so when when people are criticizing you um because perhaps they're a little bit kind of threatened by um, where you find yourself. And, and they start saying, no, well, you're not good enough. You, you're just a graduate student. You shouldn't be kind of doing that. It's a reflection of them, okay? And there may be some elements of it that you wanna take on for yourself. But the first step is to look at how is this reflecting somebody else's perspective? not necessarily how does this relate to me does that make sense so, based, so if i may just get it clear as someone reflecting their insecurities on me it can very well be so okay. when i um when i say to somebody for instance you're being too big for your boots and you're you're trying to be too important okay it might be a reflection of me thinking that everybody should be very kind of low key and, and they shouldn't try and kind of reach for things before their turn. Okay. But that's just my kind of world framework. And perhaps that's also my inner critic saying, Oh, don't kind of get too big. Okay. And so okay. when you can look at somebody's criticism and go, well, what information does this give me about that person? Okay, so that's the first thing. And then, is any of this relevant to me? Okay, and it's relevant is either going to be that it triggers an insecurity in you. So it kind of, it feeds an issue that you're already insecure about. Or there might be some wisdom in that feedback that you do want to apply because it's strategically appropriate for you to do so. Nalin? Um, Brian, this is really important in a mentorship uh, mm. relationship though, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, if you want to do another session next year, maybe we can focus on unho unhooking from criticism and praise. 
because we are so socialized to do things perfectly the first time and and to be well prepared for everything and and to know exactly what we're doing but the further you move in the world of work the more you actually sometimes have to do things on the spur of the moment and you don't have the opportunity to prepare and you have to wing it and kind of and and kind of answer questions without having had a chance to fully prepare and and when you only do things for praise or you avoid doing things for fear of criticism, it really holds you back in being able to show up properly. And so a lot of this is about recognizing that often, in fact, all the time, any feedback we get is first a reflection of the person who's giving the feedback. And second, we need to look for what of this feedback is valid for me? Okay, but we can go into a lot more depth on this if you want to do a specific session on this, Nolene. Yeah, Brownie, I, I do think that is so important. Um, you know, we all have these mentorship um, relationships now, so we have a partnership. Mm. And, and that's really important to, to break down, um, you know, things that your mentor or your mentee says to you mm. and are they actually, you know, on your side? Do they have mm. your back? Mm. Or is it something that they're reflecting from themselves? Yeah. So, I mean, I remember when I was very young in the world of work, I think I was probably about 25 or so. And, and my mentor at the time was a much older gentleman and he was a really lovely guy and he had a huge amount of wisdom but I will never forget a conversation where he said to me Bryony you're at a point in your career whether you need to decide whether you have children or not if you have children you're never going to go further in this organization because you'll have too many other things to worry about so if you want to develop your career I think you should make a decision not to have children and and I, I will never forget that because I don't have children and I can't say that it was his comment that um, forced that decision for me. But if I look at it now, it was purely a reflection of him and his worldview on the role of women in the workplace and women as caregivers and, and his experience of how those two roles might conflict with each other. But at the time, I took it on very strongly as I have to make a very clear decision here. I can either have children or I can have a career. And, and it really triggered some insecurities in me about the decisions that I made. And, and if I'd at the time been able to look at it from the perspective of this is just his worldview and actually none of it feels relevant for me so I'm not taking on any of it I would have been able to discard that feedback and perhaps make different decisions and I'm not saying that his feedback stopped me from having children but it's a conversation that I will never forget because it it really made me think you can either have a career or you can have children and and that's a that's a hugely influential piece of feedback to have been given without being able to look at it as, is this true for me? And what does this reflect of somebody else's worldview? So it's, that's something that I really want to kind of encourage is whenever you get criticism, first ask, how does this reflect somebody else's worldview? And then how might or what parts of this might be relevant for me and what do I want to do with that? Okay. Any questions on that? Palesa, thumbs you. up. Sure. It doesn't mean that we should discard all criticism and criticism is really important because it gives us information and it gives us different perspectives. Um, but we need to contextualize it for sometimes just what it is. 
um, and, and not internalize everything. And I, I guess really what I'm saying here is it's our job to be curious and to approach everything with curiosity rather than approaching it with, it's come out of the kind of mouth of somebody who has more experience than me, therefore it must be true, okay? Because it can be true for somebody else and not necessarily true for you. Thank you. Okay, so it's 20 past seven. I'm not sure we need to kind of push this all the way to half past seven unless anybody's got a particular burning issue. Um, so I, I wanted to kind of wrap up with any particular insights that, that you've taken from the session and, and one thing that you think you can do in the next couple of weeks to apply what, what you've taken from this session. So let's maybe start with Victor. Um, what have you taken from, from this evening and how are you going to apply that? Uh, thanks. Uh, yeah, this was an informative session. And the one thing that I've, I was able to grab was uh, um, I, I came with, uh, on this session with one issue of being a bit over ambitious, which is actually dragging my success. And one of the things that I've learned from this session is that I have to I have to learn to calm down and to set my goals that are uh, more of what I will be able to achieve in a now moment than a later moment. And I have to actually take it easy and one step at a time. And I don't have to be over ambitious and actually set goals that uh, will perhaps drag everything else that surrounds me. So that was what I've learned from this session. Fantastic. Thank you for sharing that. Anybody else want to share what they've taken from this evening? Um, Brian, how does oh. the background noise? Um, there's something I uh, asked to share on the LinkedIn crew. Um, since that's where everyone meets, can I can you can you please grant me the permission? Yeah, I'm struggling to hear you all over the background noise. Maybe you can just talk at Rory Sang. So yeah. um in our breakout room, um Rory Sang said he wanted to share something. Um I forgot the name of it now. Um so he was just asking for permission if he can just share it on the LinkedIn. Oh um, yeah. No, absolutely. I don't absolutely. think absolutely to share on the LinkedIn group. Please all share on the LinkedIn yes. group. Wonderful. Please. Yeah, fantastic. All right, one more person. Roy, you've been very quiet. What was this like for you as a mentor? Not sure, Roy, if you can hear us or if you're... Um, able to unmute uh, he might have bandwidth problems oh, okay all right all right let's pick one more person to wrap it up for us so uh gift do you want to wrap up the session for us tell us what you've taken from this okay uh, what i've taken from this first is the exercise i think it's it's a very good exercise, so I think I'll be doing it more, taking in some breath, some deep breath, and relaxing my mind mm. and bringing my my body to calmness. Mm. So, yes, and also uh, when we were in the breakup room, uh, having a chat with Roy, uh, he did give some interesting advice about uh, uh, developing yourself on your like working or in your career, you must uh, choose friends which will not uh, uh, bring you out of the way, but then will help you in reaching your goals. And also 
not forgetting uh, your family and also trying to balance uh, trying to balance life and work. So for me, that's uh, what I took from this session. Mm, I think that's great wisdom to have, to have shared. Um, definitely take time to breathe, reflect and be selective of of the people that you take advice from and the people that you surround yourself with um, and make sure that you have your own support group whoever those people might be we certainly go a lot further together than we do alone thank you for having me on for a second session it's been lovely to be here um, i really want to wish you all well for the rest of the year and yeah, dig deep, find that energy. And if you are struggling to find it, just give yourself five minutes to do a breathing exercise and to access your inner mentor and ask for their wisdom. Okay. And if you've got anything you want to chat about in the LinkedIn group, we are there. Um, and Nolene, I'm assuming you'll share this recording when it's been downloaded. I uh, will, Brani, and thanks so much for giving up your um, some time of your evening. I know you're really busy, so we appreciate it a lot. And hopefully we'll see you in person next year. Oh, that would be so wonderful. I'm looking Wouldn't forward. it? <laughs> that would be that would be very exciting. And thank you, everybody, for joining us. Um, we'll uh, be in touch on LinkedIn. Wonderful. Take care, everyone. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you. you. Bye. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Bye. Okay. I'm going to end the session now. Perfect. Thanks, Marlene. Brownie, that was a great one. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. I'll chat to you soon. Yeah. Perfect. All righty. Bye. Bye. Bye.